So analyzing frames and machines is very similar to analyzing trusses, with the difference being that trusses only have two force members, but frames and machines can have multi-force members, meaning that there can be bending as well as tension or compression in those members. And the similarities being that they are also analyzed using equilibrium equations and that they are also pin connected at the connections. And so that's what we're going to go over in this video. I have the steps down in the description to analyzing frames and machines. You can check that out. At the end of this video, we're going to be going over this example problem to give you an example of what it looks like to analyze a simple machine. And so if you find this helpful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. So the first thing we need to do in analyzing frames and machines is we need to see whether or not we need to split it up into its individual members or if we can leave at least some of the members in a system of members making their connections internal forces. So that means if they are connected, you don't need to write out their internal forces at those connections. But if you're going to split it into its individual members, you need to write those forces that are common to both of those members that got the pin connection, those forces need to be drawn in the opposite direction, but they need to be equal in magnitude. And it doesn't really matter which directions you draw them in, just so long as they're opposite. Because when you go and solve for the equilibrium equations, if they come out negative, you will know that they were drawn in the opposite direction, and so you know the proper orientation of those forces. And so oftentimes it is helpful to draw those forces and split them up into their x and y components. But other times, as we've seen in analyzing trusses, we need to leave them as their forces going in the direction that they're already going, and then we can use trig to analyze them in their components. And so after we split up all of our members and drawn their free body diagrams, where their pin connections being drawn as external forces, after we've drawn the free body diagrams like that, then we can start using equilibrium equations to analyze those members. And then we can move to, from member to member and to solve the, all those forces that we need to and end up getting what we need out of it. And so that's basically it for analyzing frames and machines. It's very similar to analyzing trusses. And so we're going to go over this example problem where we have three different pulleys. This would be considered a simple machine. And we have this weight hanging down from this pulley C and there's this force P here holding the rope and we need to find what the force P needs to be to hold this weight in equilibrium or in other words to keep it from moving. And so the members of this simple machine are going to be all of these pulleys and the rope and because we consider ropes and cables to have the same tension throughout the whole thing we can use that to our advantage here and because they're not moving we don't need to separate the rope and the and the pulleys from where they're at. We will draw the free body diagrams of the pulley with the rope going over it or the portion of rope that is touching the pulley and that will help us to solve for all those internal forces of this rope. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to draw a free body diagram of all these pulleys and so first we're going to start off with pulley A and we have our rope coming up and over here and we have the force in here we already know is P and so for this to be in equilibrium there would have to be a reaction force we'll call this A sub Y because we're not solving for those reaction forces we don't really actually need them but because this rope is going to have the same tension throughout it we are going to label this as being p as well then we're going to draw our next free body diagram of pulley c where we have our rope coming up and over or down and under and then we have our 60 pound weight right here and then we have because this rope is the same it connects to this side on the pulley we know that it has to be opposite in magnitude and equal or opposite in direction and equal in magnitude so we have that force p right there 
And then finally we have this part of the rope going through the middle of that pulley. And so we don't really know what that one would be, but we know the tension in the rope is the same throughout and this goes around the pulley like that. And so it would also have to be P. And you could probably guess right now what this one's gonna be because it just comes over pulley B and so it's also gonna be P, but we're going to draw our pulley B and it is gonna have our reaction force that we're not gonna really care about after, but we have our tension in our rope here. We have this one was P, opposite direction, equal in magnitude, so it is also gonna be P. The tension stays the same throughout the rope, so it's gonna be P here. And then we know that this, these two parts of the rope connect together, and so it is also gonna be P right there. So, we are going to establish our coordinate system where this is the x direction and this is the y direction. And then we have one known force in this free body diagram, whereas the other free body diagrams don't have any known forces. So we're gonna start with our free body diagram of our pulley C. And we're gonna do the sum of the forces in the y direction. And it's gonna be in equilibrium so it's going to be equal to zero because that's what we're trying to find is what it needs to be in equilibrium. And so here we have our force P plus P plus P minus 60. And then we can add these three P's up. So it'll be three P subtract the 60 over to the other side and we'll get that three P equals 60. Divide both sides by three and you get the P equals 20 pounds. So P needs to be 20 pounds of force to keep this block in equilibrium. So that is how you analyze a simple machine. If you want more videos that go over example problems, there will be links to those videos at the end of this video. And I've also started creating awesome new designs using the student engineering logo and I put them on shirts and hoodies and mugs and stickers and other things. There's a link to that down in the description. You can check that out and get some awesome new merch. If you have any questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the comments. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer, Student Engineering, where my goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So if you found this helpful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe.